Today we're going to do another project using JavaScript and this is something I think is important for us to do in between these lessons here because you need to not just see how to create JavaScript but you also need to see how we can actually use it inside a real website. Now in the previous project we created a calculator which wasn't the most exciting thing to create using JavaScript so in this episode we're going to create something much more exciting than a calculator. So as you can see in front of me here, I did already build the project we're going to make for these two episodes and we're going to make a toggle menu inside this website here. Now a toggle menu is a menu that you can open and close using a button. You've probably seen that before on a cell phone or a tablet when you want to open up the menu. And this is what we're going to build for this episode here. Now just to demonstrate, if we were to go in here and click this button, you can see that we open up a menu on the left side if we were to click it again, we close it again. And this is something we can simply build using JavaScript. And this is a perfect project for us to start out with when we want to see a real example on a real website using JavaScript. So what I have in here, if we were to just erase everything because we need to start at new, is I have a basic index page that has nothing inside of it except for a reset style sheet. And again, you should know what a reset style sheet is from the HTML course on my channel or from somewhere else. If you don't know what that is, I will link a lesson on it in the description. And I also have a style sheet linked to it underneath it here. Now, as you can see, I don't actually have any styling inside my style sheet because that's something we're going to make together in this episode. And we're also going to make the HTML markup inside the index page in this episode. And the JavaScript code is something we're going to make in the next episode. So my main.js file, which I already created, is completely empty as well because we don't have any JavaScript in this episode. So I'm going to go back into my index.html page and we're going to create that first because we need to think about what exactly we want to do using JavaScript before we set up the HTML markup inside our website. So taking a look at our website, you can see that right now I have a bar at the top here that has a button inside of it. And then the primary menu of this website, we also have the black bar on the side here, which is going to be a separate element inside our index page. So that is going to be a simple element we're going to position on the side and it's going to change width when we click the button inside the website. So that is what we need to create first of all inside our index page. So we want to go inside the index page here. We're going to start by making the navigation at the top of the website. So I'm going to create first of all a nav tag, which is going to be the bar that goes from left to right of the website at the top. Now, before we jump to the style sheet, I do want to create the content for the navigation first. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a div box that is going to be the button that we click on in order to open and close the navigation. And I'm just going to go ahead and give this div box a background image in order to uh, get the, the look for the button. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it off here without inserting anything in between the div tags. And then afterwards, I'm going to create a unordered list that is going to contain the uh, navigation that you see at the top there. Now, this navigation is not really important for our uh, small project here. It's just something I create for aesthetics look. So you don't need to create this navigation if you don't want to. But I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste it from my cheat sheet over here on the side. So I have a really quick navigation. And again, a navigation is something that's very basic for HTML, so you should know how to create it by now. So now we have a div box, we have a navigation, and we also have a unordered list with a bunch of menu items. Now let's actually go ahead and style this specific piece of uh, content inside the website. So if we were to go inside the nav text, I do want to create a class that I'm going to call nav main, just so we have some sort of styling that we can hook onto in order to style the elements inside this specific container. So I'm going to save it. And then I want to give my div box a class and I want to set it to button toggle nav just to have some kind of name for it. So I want to say btn dash toggle dash nav. And it's also a name that we can look at and then see what exactly this div element does inside the website. Now we're not completely done with this div box here, but I do want to return to it a bit later when we do get started on the JavaScript code for this website. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and style the navigation at the top there. So I'm going to go inside my style sheet and inside the style sheet, we're just going to go ahead and <laughs> so the dog just crawled from under the desk and sat behind me. So apparently he's going to be part of the lesson now in my face cam. So inside my style sheet here, the first thing I want to do is I want to change the background color of the entire website because I do want to see the menu we have at the top there. So I'm going to style my body tag from inside the website and I'm going to give it a background color, background 
dash color and I do want to set it to something like F1, F1, F1 which is a very light gray color so we're going to say hashtag F1, F1, F1 and we're going to go ahead and save it then afterwards we're going to go ahead and style the actual navigation so we're going to say we had a class called nav-main and inside of here I do want to set a width to 100% because I want it to go all the way from left to right and I do also want to have a height set to 60 pixels. I do want to have a background color. And I do want to set the background color to something like white. So we can actually see what's going on inside the navigation. And I do also want to create a flex display inside the navigation so we can actually align our content in the proper way. Again, if you don't know about Flexbox, it's something I have a episode on in my HTML course. So I do recommend you go back and watch that episode if you don't know what Flexbox is inside a website. And again, I will link it in the description of this video. So we're going to create a display as Flex. <laughs> so apparently got a bit shy and crawl away from the camera, but that's fine with me. So um, what Flex does is that it allows for us to display items next to each other instead of us using float left, which is what is what we used in the past. So today we have something called Flex instead. And I do want to set my Flex wrap to wrap so our content goes next to each other inside the menu. So underneath here, I do also want to create a set index because this is a menu. It needs to always be on the top. So I do want to create a set index for a thousand just to have something afterwards we're going to go ahead and create the uh, button styling you just can't sit down i don't know if you can hear him right now but he's moving around quite a lot and making a lot of noise so i'm just going to go ahead and pause until i think he laid down now good yikes okay so the next thing we need to style is the actual button that goes inside the navigation so we're going to say we have a class called button dash or what do we call it toggle dash nav and inside of here we're going to say we have a width set to 60 pixels we have a height set to we could set it to 60 or 100 percent because the height of the navigation is in fact 60 pixels and we're also going to go ahead and set a background color now I do already have a background color chosen, which is a orange color. And it's going to be, if you want to get the, the same, what do you call it, color code in hex, it's going to be F98, F39. Again, it's being so loud. The next thing we're going to create is the background image. Now I do already have a background image chosen inside my root folder and just to show you if I were to go into it, um, actually I don't have it so I'm just going to go ahead and copy it from my uh, example that we just saw in the, in the browser. Uh, inside my image folder I do already have an image which is just called menu.png and this is just a simple transparent uh, image of you know those three bars that we usually have inside a menu so that's what i'm going to use as a background image for this example here so inside the background image styling i'm going to go ahead and say we have a url and the link is going to be to my image folder to a menu dot png and afterwards, I do want to set the repeat for the image to no repeat because we don't want the image to repeat over and over again inside um, this div box. So I do want to say background, repeat, and set it to no repeat. I do also want to set a background size, background size to 100%. Actually, no, let's not set it to 100%. Uh, let's set it to 40 because if I were to set it to 100%, just to show you, let's go ahead and do that. And we're also going to go ahead and set a background position. Again, I'm looking at my cheat sheet over here uh, to center just to make sure it doesn't move around. And we also need to make sure that when we put our cursor on top of this image or this dip box, that we still get the little, you know, hand link icon for the mouse so we do also need to set a cursor to pointer so now that we have this let's actually go ahead and check it out inside the browser so i'm going to open up my website because i haven't actually done that yet 
Gonna open it with Chrome. And as you can see, we right now have a menu that hasn't been styled yet. We also have the white uh, navigation bar and the image inside my orange box is way too big. So we're going to size it down to about 40% instead of 100%, like so. And now you can actually see we have the proper size for the background image inside the button. My dog is moving around again, it's so obnoxious. So hopefully he's just gonna stay there. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to style the actual navigation inside this uh, nav bar. And I know some of you might not have included it inside the index page. If you didn't, then just don't do the styling for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it looks the proper way. So I'm going to go underneath here inside my style sheet and I'm gonna go ahead and style the uh, nav-main, which is the entire navigation bar. And then I'm gonna pinpoint to the unordered list inside the navigation bar. Now inside of here, we're going to set a display set to flex. And the reason I'm doing so is because I want to align my uh, menu items next to each other using Flexbox instead. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to do a flex dash wrap and set it to wrap. Then I do also want to just shift out my navigation slightly from the left side. So it's not all the way up against the button. So I do want to give it a padding to the left of 15 pixels. So if we were to go ahead and refresh, you can see that we now have the items next to each other and they're not touching the button, which is good. The next thing we need to do is we need to style the individual items inside this unordered list. So we're going to go down to next line. I'm just gonna copy what we have up here and I'm going to target the list items instead. And I'm just gonna go and copy and paste again because I do also want to target the links inside the list items. So I'm going to say we have a link and I'm just gonna go and remove all the styling from inside these uh, two sections here, like so. The first thing we want to do inside the list item is that we want to say we want to set a list style to none. So we don't have any sort of bullet points, or anything inside the menu items. And I do also want to set a line height to 60 pixels because the height of my navigation is 60. So in order to center my text inside the navigation, it needs to have a line height set to 60 pixels, of course. So now if we were to refresh it, you can see that it has been centered inside the navigation. So inside my uh, anchor text down here, we do also need to include some styling. I'm going to first of all say we want to set it for display block. So we can give it a height and a width and that sort of thing. So I'm going to set a, a height to 100%. And I'm also going to go ahead and set a padding because they need to have some distance from one another. I'm going to set a padding to zero from the top and bottom and just about maybe 10 pixels from the left and right, like so. And I do also want to include a text transform set to uppercase. So it's not all non caps or whatever, it's all capitalized. And I do also want to set a text decoration to none because usually when we use links, they have this underline under it. Uh, under it. So I do want to get rid of it. So we're gonna set text decoration to none. Just to see what we have so far, you can see that now we have something that looks a bit more like a navigation. I do need to change the styling for the text. So we're going to set a color and I'm the sort of person who doesn't like to use black, like the complete black 000 hex color. I do want to set it to a very dark gray color because it looks better for the eyes inside a website. So I'm going to choose a hashtag 111 inside the website and it just moved around again. So now that we have this, we just need to change the font styling. So we're going to say we want to set a font family. Uh, let's actually choose it here. Font family set to Arial. Again, you can just download a, another font from the internet, but I'm just gonna use a standard font for this episode. I do also want to set a font size, and I want to set it to 16 pixels, and save it. So now we should have the entire styling for the top navigation here, which is uh, good, and this is what we came here for. There's one more thing I do want to include, which is a, a hover styling for my button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it here. And I do want to set this one to hover. And I want to change the background color. Actually, not the background color. Let's change the opacity. Opacity 
to something like 0 0.5. And let's go ahead and save it. And now I can see it changes when we do hover on it. That might have been a bit too much, but now we can actually see we're actually clicking it when we do actually click it. So that's the point here. Uh, the next thing we need to create is the black bar that goes on the left side here that is going to open up using JavaScript. And this is what we're actually going to be messing around with when it comes to the JavaScript. So inside my website, you can see that when I click it, it grows in size or in width, and then the text inside the box gets visible. When I click it again, it gets uh, invisible. So that's what we want to create in the, in the style sheet for this specific element here. So first of all, we need to go inside the index page because we haven't actually created the element that is going to open up and close inside the website. So I do want to go down here and create a separate element just below the navigation. And I do want to create a aside element, which is just a basic sidebar inside a website. You could have used a div box too if you wanted to. The element doesn't really matter in this case. And inside the aside, I do want to include a navigation again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what I have up here and paste it in. And I do want to change these around slightly because first of all, if you were to look at my example, you can see that I have a title for all the, the links I have down here. So that needs to be a slightly different styling than the other links. So inside my style sheet, I do need to change the styling for the top item. So we need to go ahead and remove the anchor tag. And instead, I'm just gonna include a span tag. So we can target this specific menu item here. And then I want to change so we don't have a hyper reference. We don't need that. And then I'm going to include a title, so it says projects. And then we're just gonna go ahead and change all the menu points down here. Now I'm just gonna copy paste from what I have inside my cheat sheet. And you can just go ahead and pause the video and take your time to actually write all the text in here if you want the same text. You could also just write something random, doesn't really matter. And what we have now is a basic sidebar that is going to open and close when we have something going on with JavaScript. Now I do want to include a class for the aside element. So I want to say class, and I want to set this one to nav-sidebar. So you're going to notice that we have nav main and nav sidebar. So we have two different stylings for two different navigations. So now that we have this, we're actually ready to do some styling to it. So inside my style sheet, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Now, before we start styling the sidebar, I do want to do one more thing to the main navigation at the top of the website, which is to give it a position fixed so that when we were to scroll on the website, it stays at the top of the website. And again, this is basic HTML and CSS, so you should know what position fixed does. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the styling here for it. So inside the nav main, I'm gonna say we have a position set to fixed, and then I want the top to be zero, like so. So now if we were to scroll on the website, it's going to stay at the top of the website. So one more thing I want to do here is I want to go down to my sidebar and also give it a position fixed. So I'm going to say we have a styling called nav-sidebar. And inside the sidebar styling, we're going to give it a position set to fixed. And we're gonna go ahead and set it to left zero pixels or just zero because you don't need to add pixels behind it when it's zero. And we also need to set it to bottom zero. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and create the, what do you call it, the height and the width for this specific box here. So I'm going to set a width to 50 pixels, which is going to make sense in a second, not 60, because what we want to do is we want to align uh, the width of this black box with the button up here and the button up here is 60 pixels wide But I do want to add a padding to this line down here to make sure that To make sure that the text inside the sidebar does not go outside and touch the, the sides of this menu here So we do need to add a padding to this black bar So I'm going to go inside my styling again, and I'm going to set the width to 50 pixels then I'm going to set a padding to zero and five pixels. So now we have a five pixel padding on the left and right side, uh, which is going to add up to 60 pixels with the width we have here, if that makes sense. So we're also gonna go ahead and include a height, and we're gonna go ahead and use a new feature in CSS, which is the calc feature. So we're going to calculate, and inside the calc 
parentheses here, I'm going to set a, uh, I'm going to take the complete height of the website. So we're going to set 100 view height and minus 60 pixels because our navigation is 60 pixels tall. So we take the complete height of the website or the browser, and then we subtract 60 pixels from it. So we're going to save it. And lastly here, we're going to give it a background color and set it to, what did I set it to? I set it to 1B, 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 1B. And now if we were to refresh the browser, you can see that now we have a black bar going all the way from the top to the bottom. At least it stops right before the navigation at the top. So now we have all these items inside uh, our sidebar that needs to be styled and hidden when we don't have the, the sidebar activated and open. So we need to do that using styling as well. So inside the style sheet here, there's one more thing I want to do to the sidebar, which is to first of all, give it a set index as a thousand. Again, just to make sure it doesn't go under the content inside the website. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and style the actual content inside our uh, sidebar. So I'm gonna go down to the next line. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what I have up here. And I'm going to delete everything from inside what I copied and pasted. And I'm going to add that we have a unordered list. I'm also gonna go ahead and add that we have a list item. And I'm also going to go ahead and add that we have a list item and a link. And I do need to make sure we do this the proper way. There we go. Now we also need to remember that I included a span for the title inside the navigation, which is right here. So we do also need to target that using style, uh, the style sheet. So I'm going to copy what we have here, paste it below, and say we have a span that I want to target. So now we should have all the different stylings for all the items inside the sidebar. So what I want to do now is I want to go to the UL and I want to do a little bit of the styling we need to do. There's some more styling we need to apply that I'm going to wait with because I want to show you the effect of it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to set a padding set to the top as 15 pixels. Again, just to push it away from the top so it doesn't touch the button at the top there. And then afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and start the list item, which is down here. Again, we're not done with the UL tag, like I mentioned, but we're going to wait with the rest of the styling. And inside the list items, we're going to set a line height to 60 pixels, just so we get something that looks a little bit the same as above. And we're also gonna set a list style as none, like so. And that's basically what we need to do with the list items. Now, I just noticed that the styling for the span tag and the anchor tag are going to be completely the same. So we can actually do this in a much better way. So instead of having two separate stylings, we can just copy the path from the bottom one and add it to the top up here. So you can say comma and add the path here. So now we're actually styling the same for both of these items here. So the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to set a display block. Then we're going to set a height to 60 pixels. And again, if you want to change the height to something a little bit uh, smaller, then you also need to change the line height from up here in order for it to match up inside the website, just FYI. We're also gonna set a padding. We're gonna set it to zero and 10 pixels, just so we have some spacing from the text and the side of the boxes inside up. And we're also gonna go ahead and set a text decoration and set it to none, because we don't want to have an underline under the uh, navigation items. And then we want to set a text transform to uppercase. So it matches the top menu at the top there. Then for the actual text styling, we're gonna set a color to white. So we're gonna say FFF. We're gonna set a font family to Arial. We're gonna set a font size to 16 pixels. Now, before we continue styling, I do need to show you what exactly we have so far inside the browser, because the rest of the styling we have left in this episode is going to affect the JavaScript in the next episode. So before we do anything, I do need to show you why we need to apply the rest of the styling inside the style sheet. So if I were to go inside the website here and refresh, as you can see, right now we have all the menu items inside uh, our sidebar, but we also have a couple of issues. First of all, the menu items should not be visible. They should be invisible. And second of all, when they're actually visible, 
you can see that the text is going underneath each other. We do have text jumping to the next line and going under each other, which is not something it should do. So what we need to do using style, uh, CSS styling is that we need to make sure that the text goes in one line and we need to force it in one line, even though it can't be inside the container it's inside of. So going into our style sheet, we need to go into our uh, bottom styling here and we need to set something called white space. So we're going to say white dash space and we need to set it to no wrap. And what this does is that it makes sure that the text does not jump down to the next line if there's no space for it. So once you go inside the website, refresh, you can now see that everything is going on one line inside the styling here. So it's jumping outside the container, which is what we want it to do. The next styling we're going to apply to this is going to be inside the unordered list styling we have up here. So I want to do the rest of the styling for this unordered list. The first styling is going to be that we want to set a overflow to hidden. So if we were to say overflow, hidden, then you can see that if we were to refresh the browser, that if any text goes outside the container, then it's going to be cut off so we can't see it outside the container, which is also something we need to do for this to look properly when we open and close it using JavaScript. Um, so inside the style sheet, the, the last style we're going to apply is we're going to hide the content inside this sidebar. So right now, because we haven't actually opened up the menu, we need to make sure that the content is hidden until we click the button. So I'm going to set a styling that is going to be called visibility. And I want to set this one to hidden. And then using JavaScript, when we do actually click the button, I need to change the styling into visible, which we can actually do using JavaScript. We can change all sorts of CSS styling using JavaScript. So this is what we needed to do so far inside the style sheet. We're just gonna go ahead and refresh the browser. And as you can see, we can't actually do anything to anything inside the sidebar, which is the goal for this episode here. Now, before we end off the episode, I do want to do one more thing inside the style sheet, which is to make sure that when we hover a mouse on top of the menu in the sidebar, then it also changes something with the background color, just to make sure that we can actually see what we're hovering on. So I do want to copy the path we have here, and I do want to change it to hover, and we can just remove the span part of it because we don't actually need to have that. It's just going to be the links that I want something to happen to. And I want to change the background color. And I want to change it into a dark gray color that is not as dark as the background color for the whole uh, sidebar. So I want to change it to 222 just to give it something. So right now we should have exactly what we want to inside our website when it comes to HTML and CSS. So this was the first part of this episode and in the next one we're gonna learn how to actually create the JavaScript that will in fact open and close this menu that we built using HTML and CSS. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode.